Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are taking a look at none other than the Hot Toys Mandalorian and the Child Deluxe Pack. This is TMS 015. Thank you guys for watching. Let's go. All right, guys, and taking a closer look at the box art, I'm not going to spend too much time on this just because you guys have seen this already, but this is my first Star Wars Hot Toys on the channel, so I did want to point out some key features that their boxes have. Starting off with the um, gray and black kind of um, border that they have on all of their boxes. I think it's really classy with a uh, product shot of the figure dead center in the middle with the black and the gray borders around it. Very nice and sleek. And then down below, you're going to have this cigar band that they have added to the boxes. And it has, um, you know, product images on either side as well. But that is one thing that I did want to point out. Just because all of the other art boxes that we've seen on this channel so far are very, very cool. They're abstract. They have different images and stuff like that. But for most Star Wars releases... This is how they will look, and I'm such a fan. They look very sleek, very subtle, and I think it gets the job done. All right, and then when you take that top cover off, you are greeted to this amazing artwork that Hot Toys has given us. And yes, these are the actual figures that come inside, and I just think their artwork is some of the best sometimes. Um, I love these slip covers that they always add into the boxes. It's just an extra level of detail um, for the person that's opening the boxes. You have um, Din Jar in there, the Mandalorian, and you have AKA Baby Yoda, Grogu, the child in his hover prim, and they're just recreating that scene um, from the Mandalorian show. So I really do like that. This is once again TMS 015. So this is the deluxe. All right, guys, and now that I got the clam tray out of the box, couldn't do it on camera, was a feat in its own. We are going to take the first hand impressions of the Mandalorian and the child and here he is guys and all I can say is wow this is a unit um the heft feels great first in hand impressions he looks amazing so let's take everything that comes in the box out and take a closer look all right guys now we finally have everything that is in the box with your TMS 015. Again, this is the deluxe version. So some of the things that are in this video, you won't be getting in the regular version, but there is a ton to unpack here as you guys can clearly see. So let's get started. All right, starting off first, I always love to go with the display bases. So let's go there. This is a classic Star Wars rectangular base here. Um, this is my first time actually seeing this in person, but this is the iconic sand base that a lot of people are not a fan of, and that is because of these two guys right here. Hot Toys has sculpted in footprints here, and they are cool and all, but when you have your figure standing on top of the base, you kind of are limited to having them in these footprints. So a lot of people don't like it for that reason, but nonetheless, you can pose around and kind of get off uh, whatever display you are looking for. The paint job is done very beautifully. You kind of have a uh, sand texture up top. It has, um, you know, it has a feel to it. So it's not just flat. Um, there's a lot of surface detail. You got different colors in there. You have grays, you have uh, light browns, you have yellows, all types in there. And they did a really good job with that. And it gets the job done for me. And right up front, you have a beautiful metal nameplate. And it says Star Wars, The Mandalorian. Like that a lot. I would love to see metal nameplates from Hot Toys always if that was the case. I think they're very sleek and all together when you have them in the display, they look really good. 
On top of this, you are also giving given this add-on piece here that you can slide on to the side of either um, on the base. Uh, and it actually is only on this side that you can do it, obviously. Um, and this is for the child. So you can have him standing right next to Mando there and he can be posted up here on his hover pram and you guys will see that later on but yeah like so hot toys just gave you a little add-on piece that you're gonna put here for your uh child and the um this little rock display here you guys can't tell um but this little rock piece here actually pops off to do so and you're given a little peg port there and they include a clear rod here and you will pop this on here like so. And then you can have Grogu on the hover pram like that as seamless as possible. So I like the way that they did that. Nothing too crazy, but it gets the job done. And now we are going to take a look at the main accessory. So starting off first, why not go with the Beskar? This is Mando, right? So you are given a hunk of Beskar ingots here for the Mandalorian. And I believe this is a deluxe um, uh, add-on piece here. So this won't you won't be getting this on the regular version, but it is a stack of Beskar ingots. And I like this a lot. Um, the detail on the surface is pretty good it kind of looks like a damascus steel if you will in the real world um nothing too crazy there and these pieces right here come off and this is actually magnetic so you can actually have them you know sliding on the top however you want having mando holding this and then having the rest in this next piece here and that is the camp tono yes you get the Camp Tono that you've seen Mando holding and where he put all of the Beskar ingots. And you're probably thinking, does this open? Yes, of course it does. Hot Toys went above and beyond here. And if I can do this with gloves on, I will. The Camp Tono doors open and you can slide in your Beskar ingots in there and having him display them. So, it's kind of tricky to do on camera and um, I will open this all here for you guys. But yeah, it is fully detailed inside and out. And I think they did an awesome, awesome job here with this. Um, there's a ton of weathering. There's carbon scoring along the outside. So it doesn't look brand new, nowhere near. And just the fact that it's actually a real work in Camp Tono and that it opens uh, as we've seen in, that sh in the show. So um, you can essentially have it open like that. Very, very beautiful, very nicely sculpted and detailed and painted and weathered all throughout this thing, not just on the outside, but as well on the inside. And it lights up as well, believe it or not. So you can have your Beskar ingots sitting inside here, like so. I don't believe that this is magnetic, but you guys can tell. Um, you can have it uh, sitting inside there, and then the light will beam um, from above and kind of give it that little, um, little effect that you've seen in the show. But yeah, this, this is a dope, dope piece. Um, when I seen this, that this was being included in the deluxe, I was like, yep, I gotta have the deluxe. Um, so they got me there on that with this piece for sure. It's just a, a very cool piece. Um, the Cantono, I believe was originally an ice cream machine, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but you know, Mandalorian repurposed it and this is where they keep their Beskar ingots safely. So yeah, just kind of trying to get it all wrangled back together on camera. But yeah, like so, I said this piece lights up. So very, very seam seamless design here that Hot Toys got going. You simply just pop off the top here, like so, without trying to break it. That is always the best. 
And yeah, so you will pop your batteries up top like that, and then this will go right back over the top, nice and seamless. Nobody would know, how would they know? And uh, yeah, I'm really liking this, very dig digging this a lot. So you guys might see this um, at the end of the video, not sure. Not sure if I'm gonna pop the lights in there though, just because the batteries are a pain in the butt to deal with. But yeah, Camp Tono, Beskar ingots, and then over here, you are given this hologram piece. And I believe we've seen this in the show as well. This might have been um, when Mando still had his Durasteel armor. And I believe this popped up um, in the armorer's um, chamber. And she was pretty, these, these are like the blueprints of the Beskar armor um, right before it was given to Din Djarin. So I like that. Um, wasn't even a necessary piece, but just goes to show that Hot Toys, if they can do it, they will throw it in there. So I like that a lot. And yes, here we go. This is the replacement shoulder piece, and this is beautiful. Um, I'm loving the best scar armor. Um, just the way that Hot Toys has done it, the way that it's the paint job, um, and you get the Mudhorn Signet here. Um, this is very, very important in the shells. Um, right after um, Din Djarin had slayed the Mudhorn, the armorer had granted him with this Signet. And I'm really liking the way that Hot Toys did this. I love the contrast from the Signet itself. Um, from the Beskar armor, it's kind of like a different tone, but it also gets the job done. It doesn't look fake. It looks like Beskar over Beskar, if that makes sense. Um, but yeah, it is has a ton of uh, weathering over the top and pitting and all, all types of, uh, you know, uh, dirt surface detail on top of the armor itself. So I really like the way that that's done and that connects via Velcro. So you will see that also later. Very um, simple change to do. Um, starting off with probably my favorite weapon um, in, this, um, in this pack. Yes, it is the Ambin Phase Pulse Rifle. And this thing is beautiful, guys. Um, if you guys can't tell on camera, this thing has so much detail to it. It's crazy. Um, starting off up top here, you got that heat treatment for the barrel. And I love the transition of colors they got. It goes to a light blue and to a pinkish purple and to a gold. Just to signify that this thing gets really, really hot. Um, you know, just another level of detail that Hot Toys throws in there. Um, so visually, you can tell, you know, this thing has been lived with. This thing, you know, isn't brand new. Um, the metal realistically would have a heat treatment to it, to it on the barrel if it was constantly getting heated up um, at ridiculous amounts. So I really like that. Um, coming down, you can see the texture, um, the detailing, sorry, on the wood grain um, as well here back in the stock. But yeah, there's a ton of uh, dry brushing up top. There is scuffing, there's surface detail, and it just really drives home the fact that, you know, Din Djarin has had this for a while, you know what I mean? And um, all the metal working parts getting um, scratched up and, you know, messed with. So I'm really, really digging this a lot. Also, um, it comes with a pleather strap and a real working hinge back here, as you guys can see. So um, this can attach to the Mandalorian as uh, seen on the TV show. He's always rocking it around his uh, shoulder. So you guys will see that later. Um, and it clips in via peg. I'm not too happy about that. Um, I think that's going to be a problem long term. I just feel like, you know, that is not a safe connection port. But, you know, that's the way that Hot Toys went about it. So it is what it is. Just do be careful when you peg that in and out. You don't want that peg to pop off. Um, also here on the back, it's crazy. You wouldn't even think that, you know, that this opens up when you first see this, but yeah, the cartridge port 
opens up back here. So you can actually have uh, Mando um, loading uh, ammo cartridges into this, if you will. Um, I probably won't be doing that, maybe for a picture here or there, but it's just really, really cool that, you know, the level of detail is there and Hot Toys goes above and beyond um, to make this as authentic as possible. Uh, the scope as well is very, very cool. Um, it also comes off. It is pegged on there and you do want to just be careful. Um, you don't want to break this thing, guys. Uh, let me just make sure that, you know, we're not doing that on camera, but it, it is a tough, it is a tough peg. So I will say just take your time um, trying to unpeg this and can I do it? All right. And it is safely removed now. Um, trust me. If you got to take your time to un, uh, uh, undo this, definitely do that. Um, I didn't want to risk breaking it on camera, but like you guys see, the scope is removable and you can actually even have Mando holding it. It comes with a specific hand for that. So that's just awesome too. Um, they didn't really have to do that. They didn't have to make it removable, but just the fact of all these small moving parts, Hot Toys um, is known for. Um, just the authenticity is just really, really dope. And then that just goes back on like so. So yeah, just take your time when you're trying to pop them on and off. But it probably won't be a piece that I'm constantly removing for that uh, reason. Uh, moving on here, um, you have Mando's Blaster. And this thing is awesome as well. There is a ton of detail here. Um, there is a ton of surface detail. You've got kind of like a dry brushing, different layers of paint. Um, nothing too crazy to write home about. But I really do like the backstory on this. Um, for, though you, for those of you who don't know, um, this was uh, modeled after a old World War I gun, I believe, maybe even World War I or II, I'm not, mis I'm not sure. But it was um, created after the Bergen 1884, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so it, it was created for the Star Wars universe, but off of a real life gun. So I think that's just a really cool um, thing that Star Wars uh, did there with that, um, bringing in realistic weapons into a, you know, sci-fi uh, kind of um, world. So that's a really cool uh, piece there as well. Um, here you are given the flamethrower effect and i like this a lot um very simple straightforward this is done in a translucent plastic and it kind of just changes colors throughout um, starting off from a blue um this is would be where the gas is being ejected from the nozzle so um blue into clear and then into a deep reddish orange color and you guys will also see this on Mando later on. Um, and I really like the way that they did that as well. Um, you are also given this small, small piece. And this is Mando's uh, flashlight that goes on his helmet. And you can actually also pop this on there as well. Nothing crazy. Matches the paint job with the helmet perfectly and um you have a little bit of white there uh for the flashlight itself so not sure if this would be something that i keep on my mando all the time but it's crazy that you know that they added it if you want it you could pop it on um take a couple photos with that and then go back to the regular um helmeted look so i really do like that as well um you are also given this very, very small Mythosaur necklace for your baby Yoda, aka Grogu, and nothing too crazy here. Um, as you guys can tell, it's a super, super small sculpt. Um, it's probably the size of my pinky nail, um, but you know, the sculpt is there, the um, paint job is there as well. There's even a little bit of a patina. Um, from what I'm seeing, if you look at it very, very closely. So it's not just a flat um, grayish color. There, there's a little bit of detail there, but yes, 
um, done very nicely and you will have to uh, pop off the head of your Grogu, of course, to get it around him because this um, string does not flex. So just bear that in mind. Tons of tons of stuff to go around here, guys. Um, trying to make it fast. You are also getting this hover pram for baby Yoda Grogu um, for the deluxe set, guys. So this is, I think, another deluxe add-on feature that you won't be getting with the regular. Um, but check this out, man. This this paint job is sick, guys. There's multiple layers of paint here. You got a silver um, chipping undertone, and then you got this uh, the hover pram paint job going over the top, signifying like, you know, this has been going through the universe and just getting scuffed around as he goes and as he uh, hovers throughout it. But the sculpt and the paint job is done very nicely throughout this thing. As you guys can see, there's washes in the cracks. Um, there's even different uh, layers of paint. I'm really, really liking this. Um, it's dirty, it's grimy, it's looking very, very real. Um, and also, yes, it's not just solid. You can pop it off. And this is probably the way that I would rock it. You're given this um, small little cloth here, kind of like um, Grogu's blanket. And look at that, even the inside of the hover, hover pram is done very nicely. It is nicely painted and sculpted inside. Um, and I'm really, really digging that. Um, I will show you guys the um, Grogu's later on and I'll show you guys um, how he looks inside of here as well. All right, guys, taking a quick look at everything else that you get, just because I'm running short on time. Um, so starting off with this piece, this is the Vibro Blade, and this thing is just beautiful, guys. Take a look at it. It has so much levels of details. There's surface dirt. There's chipping off of the paint. This thing has been through a couple battles, and I think this is very necessary. Um in a Mandalorian um, uh, set, just because this is what he used to slay the Mudhorn. So I like that a lot. Um, not sure if I'll be displaying him with that, but you can actually slide this onto the figure itself um, by the boot. Um, moving on to this piece here. Um, this is a attachment piece for the gauntlet, and this is the Whistling Birds effect in the active position and there you can kind of see all the little mini darts ready to go and to be shot off at Din Djarin's command. Nothing too crazy there but it matches the Beskar paint on the rest of the armor and there's some surface detail on there as well. Very very nicely done as well. And with that here we have one of the deluxe um, version uh, add-ons here and not only do you get the whistling birds effect in the ready position but you also get this and these are the whistling bird um darts being launched straight out of the um uh, brace itself so i really like this it's uh this clips on to the to the brace and then you have a kind of like a solid white um smoke stream going off and you can see the darts up front here done very very nicely looks like smoke uh there's a little bit of like a speckled pattern there light browns um and i'm really digging this i might throw that on there once or twice for some pictures um he comes with uh a different various sets of hands here um nothing too crazy to write home about um, he does have, you know, speckling on the ends of his uh, gauntlets here for the backs of his hands. Um, you know, there's dirt, there's grime. Uh, the hands are done nicely. Um, I feel like I remember people uh, complaining about the yellow on the gloves, um, saying that it wasn't as accurate to the season one uh, Beskar look that we've seen. Um, not too sure. Don't quote me on that, but... Uh, if you guys know the answer to that, comment down below and let me know. Um, 
here we also have a very very small um, detonator here uh, these are the little like mines that uh, Mando popped on to Moff Gideon's um, TIE fighter as we've seen in the season um, nothing too crazy here it does have uh, foam padding on the back so then when you do uh, slide this onto Mando's belt it doesn't scratch up any of that paint but done very very nicely in a metallic uh, red it looks very very uh, vibrant and it looks like it's on actually so I like how they did that and yes here we also have a very another small piece and this is the um, this is the tracking fob for uh, any of the bounties that Mando had or, you know, to find the asset like we always seen. So I like this a lot. Um, nothing too crazy. Um, it's done very, very nicely. Sculpt is done very well as well for a small piece. There is surface detail. There's dirt. There's grime on it. There's washes in the crevices. So I think they did a really good job like that. And you can also store this onto the Mando himself. Taking a look at the jetpack, this thing is beautiful, guys. The Beskar paint that Hot Toys used, um, they did a really good job. It reflects paint a lot. Everybody knows that Beskar is impervious, but there is a ton of surface detail on there. And it's not to show that there's battle damage or anything, but it's just to show that this has been used a lot by Mando, you know what I mean? There's surface uh, dirt, um, so that's that's not damage, that's just dirt and weathering that, that the actual piece itself would have. And I really do like down here, um, you kind of have like a little heat treatment around the thrusters, um, and that is for these flame effects that you get, and you can simply just peg these in like so. And it kind of gives that effect like that Mando's uh, about to take off like that. So those are very cool. Um, nothing too crazy on the jetpack. It is magnetic and it has um, that foam padding again. Hot Toys figured, hey, we don't want you to scratch up that Beskar paint on Mando. So this is really cool. It just magnetizes right onto the back of him. Um, I like how they did that. Moving on to one of the figures that you get here in this pack and yes it is the child um you do get two different versions but starting off with the standing version i think it looks amazing they did a really good job he's so cute you can tell the innocence in the sculpt i love the eyes they look like you know glass eyes they did a really good job with that the paint he has kind of like a softer tone on the inside of his ears for the lighter colors. Um, the, the, um, the suit itself, or however you would say the, the jacket that he wears, is done very nicely as well. It has, uh, you know, movement to it. The sculpt, it looks so real, guys. Um, you guys wouldn't be able to tell that this is all sculpted just by all the little movement that they have in it. Um, it looks like it's flowing in the wind. I like that a lot. There's even darker tones on for the low tones and high spots. So there is a ton of paint on this. And I think they did a really, really good job. Um, the head sculpt is on a ball joint. So um, you can get some articulation out of him. Nothing too crazy. Um, so just do be careful when you move him around, but yeah, cute, cuddly, the child, I think they did a really good job. Only thing is, is I know a lot of people complained that there's no hair on his head and you know, that's uh screen accurate. He did have hair. Um, so I know a lot of people say they could have just painted it on if they didn't want to do, um, some type of like flocked hair over the top of the sculpt, but very, very nicely. You can even see he has two little teeth under there um, to signify that his mouth is slightly open. So I really do like this piece. And who doesn't love the child? You're also given this uh, one as well. And this is kind of like half sculpt. And this is the one that you will be using for the hover pram. Um, his hands will be like gripping onto the hover pram. Um, and this one as well uh, has uh, articulation in the head. Um, I'm not sure if you can swap the heads. I'm assuming you could, um, 
but I'm, I haven't done that yet, so I'm not too sure. If any of you guys have this, please let me know. And this sculpt is a little bit different. His mouth is a lot more open, and you can see the rows of teeth. Just the depth and the level of detail that Hot Toys does for us is insane. But yes, um, the base of this is also magnetic, so he's not sliding around. But look at that. There's even detail on the bottom of where you wouldn't see it. I just, like... That kind of stuff gets me. I love Hot Toys. They don't cut corners. You know, they're painting these things to the T. And I think they really did a good job with the sculpt there. So with that being said, we have finally seen everything. Let's take Mando out and take a closer look. All right. I know that I said let's take a look at the figure, but I lied really quick. This is the last piece that I missed out on the wired grappling hook. And guys... This is a die cast rod. So yes, this is made of metal. And this is the grappling hook that you've seen him also use in the show when he was pulling that um, uh, first bounty that he was looking for in that one bar. So I really like this. Nothing too crazy to write home about, but it is sculpted and detailed very nicely. It, the paint job matches everything else. I love the silver, um, but this will go on his gauntlet and you guys will see that a little bit later so yep now let's take a look at the figure all right guys and here we have him we are finally taking a look at mando and he looks amazing doesn't he this figure is so sick guys if you can't tell already let's take a look from top to bottom starting off at the head sculpt the bucket is amazing guys the sculpt is 100 percent there for me um no problems here whatsoever um i think it looks identical to what he looks like on screen um i think hot toys is uh pretty good at making these they've done bobas in the past um this isn't our only mando so no no complaints here um the color of the beskar armor the paint job is so dope and it's crazy because it's not just like a flat silver color i'm not sure if you guys can see that if it's picking it up but there's almost like a surface detail almost like surface dirt it almost looks like there's you know dirt around the edges or the high points where he'd be getting dirty um, on his helmet so i really like that um if you guys can tell the black for the visor is not just painted black, it's actually a separate piece, so there's depth to it as well. Um, the sculpt um, delivers there, um, and I really, really dig it. There's even dirt and washes in the crevices there as well as you guys can see. Um, and as well in the back, you got the little vent ports, kind of like all Mandalore um, buckets and also like Boba has on his um and down here for the torso again you have his best guard plates right up front on his chest looking very very nice you have a ton of surface uh detail there um because remember best guard is impervious so there isn't gonna be battle damage on this but they just want to show you you know he's definitely lived in it there is there's dirt on it and grime from going around in Tatooine, Navarro, and all those different planets he's been around. Um, the bandolier and his belt buckle is pleather. Um, you have uh, all these different various ammo canisters, and you actually have the one that's missing, so that's accurate to um, the show. And these are actually removable. You can take all of these out. You can actually have him hold them and putting them in the Ambin Phase Pulse Rifle if you guys would like to do that. Um, now down here for his belt, he also has um, a couple of metal studs there for the buttons. Uh, the belt buckle is sculpted and these pouches here and on the side that are holding his um, bombs are, um, these are sculpted hard plastic. So I really like the way that they did that. Um, the shoulder pieces, again, for the Beskar armor, looking very, very dope. Um, if you guys want to see what it looks like with the 
uh, swap out piece. All right, and now you guys can see that we have the swap out um, shoulder pad, and this has the Mudhorn signet on it, like he uh, was granted by the armor in the one episode. And also up here as well, up top, you have his flashlight as well that you can pop on. Now, I kind of have like a little gap on mines, but you know, just gotta, it, it's tight just because it's the first time I popped out the piece. So you just want to uh, make sure that you get that on properly, but it looks very dope. I like that. I like that they give you different, um, you know, ways to display uh, Mando. Um, the more the merrier, right? So uh, moving on down here, um, he has kind of like this little like under belly armor here. Um, I like it, it's not that big of a deal, but um, I know some people were saying that the color could have been a little bit darker. Um, it's too light, people say, but um, nothing crazy. I think it's it gets the job done for me. Um, also, a lot of people were saying that the flight suit is rather inaccurate. Um, I kind of don't remember it. I feel like it was a placebo. Uh, I'll have to go back and watch it. It's been a minute since I've uh, seen it, but I will say on the product images for the box, the suit is a lot browner. So I'm not sure what happened there. Um, they could have like dyed it at the last minute. There is like, even here, there's some brown, but I know his suit has like multiple different layers. So the oversuit for the flight suit, um, you know, could have been a little bit darker brown, but it's kind of like a gray here and, uh, you know, it, it's not as accurate to the show. And down here you have his thigh pieces, his thigh armors, and you have this nice Beskar piece right here. And then you have his old um, thigh piece that is the Duras steel armor that he brought over to the new one. And it's crazy because they even sculpted it and it like is actually lifted. It looks like it is melted piece of Beskar that got onto this armor, but so much detail here. The paint job is crazy. Um, looks very realistic. Down to here as well, you can see that it like dripped down onto his um, uh, boot piece here. And you also have these other uh, ammo pieces as well. And you have his boots. So very, very nice. I'm digging this a lot, guys. Um, I don't want to take up too much more of your guys' time. Just trying to show off the figure the best that I can. Um, the cape, nothing too fancy there. Um, not wired or anything. It drapes very nicely. Um, there's this hole here, and a lot of people always think that their cape comes uh, bad, but it's actually for you to slip through that um, pleather piece to hold the Ambin Face Pulse Rifle like he did in the show. Um, I do want to show you guys real quick the swap out pieces for the gauntlets. All right, guys. So on this side, starting off, um, you simply just pop the hand off and this is the flame uh, attachment accessory and it just simply slides right into the gauntlet like that. And look at that, guys. It just literally matches up perfectly with the nozzle. It's just insane how Hot Toys does this. Um, I wish I could go to one of their factories and just literally see how they make these because it, it's really impressive. Looks very, very um, realistic, very seamless, and it gets the job done. So I like that. All right, guys. And just real quick, you can see that we attached the whistling birds attachment but here it has it in the ready firing mode so you can see all the tiny little best guard darts ready to be fired and now for the deluxe piece look at that guys deluxe piece i think is definitely worth it you guys have the whistling birds being launched right out of the gauntlet seamless as possible i think that looks amazing don't you guys? Very, very sick. I'm really liking the way that looks. Might take a couple photos with that, but there is the deluxe piece. Wrapping up everything, guys, we are gonna take a quick look at articulation. Starting off at the head sculpt, it is on a double ball joint. So 
There is one at the top of the base of the uh, head sculpt and at the base of the neck. So it can look up, down, side to side, pretty much can rock in any way. Pretty, pretty dynamic head sculpt and it can lean forward and back as well. Um, the arms will go up to about here. And, um, you know, you guys got to just pay attention in mind that there is multiple layers on this suit and there is a fat suit under the figure. Um, I did forget to mention that. So um, articulation will be slightly limited going up to about here. Going back to about there. I do believe there is a hinge and a uh, swivel on the um, shoulder, but it is going to be contending with the uh, padded suit and the fat suit. Um, there is a um, swivel at the upper uh, bicep. You have a bend, double bend at the elbow, getting a little bit past 90, and then you have a regular one six scale uh, peg here for the hand and down here for the torso you're not going to get a lot of ab crunch um you know you got the fat suit so you guys got to just be careful you got all this armor it does kind of rock side to side like that and he can twist um coming down to the legs they go out to about there going back to about there there is an upper swivel at the upper thigh there and you have a ratcheted knee that gets you to about there and then you have a split cut boot design down here for the feet so yeah guys if you liked this video don't forget to like comment and subscribe and um, stay tuned. Check out my Instagram. Might see some photos or we might do a part two to this with some poses. Thank you guys for watching.